Welcome to the Doctor's Podcast, Health Tips Weekly, Episode Three, Anti-Vax. What does the evidence say? Hello, everyone. Welcome back to the Doctor's Podcast, where we will be providing health tips weekly. Have you heard of? Or happen to know someone that is anti-vax? Anti-vax or anti-vaccination, which is formerly known as vaccine hesitancy, is the delay in acceptance or refusal to vaccinate despite the availability of vaccines. According to World Health Organization, vaccine hesitancy is rather complex, and it is not a simple attitude of acceptance or rejection. Indeed. It contains different beliefs and behaviors within the group. For instance, some may completely refuse all type of vaccines, whereas some may refuse certain vaccines. But agree to others, some may accept or delay the scheduled vaccination, but still feeling unsure about the safety of the vaccine. The increased popularity of vaccine hesitancy threatens to diminish the effort made in eradicating vaccine-preventable diseases. In fact, the World Health Organization had identified this behavior as one of the 10 global health threats of 2019. So, what are the beliefs among the anti-vax groups, and what does the evidence say? This podcast is made by the team at Doctors. Doctors is your personal pocket doctor at your fingertips. With its name synonymous to talk to us, Doctors is a mobile application that allows you to talk to a doctor or any healthcare professionals via text chat at any time and from anywhere. Download Doctors app on Google Play Store or Apple App Store today. You can also find us on My Sejatra app. Where we are the only telemedicine company that provides free virtual health advisory for COVID-19. Now back to the show. Number one, vaccines are not effective. It's a scam of the pharmaceutical industry. False. The effectiveness of the vaccines is strongly supported by scientific evidence. According to WHO, vaccines had prevented 2 to 3 million deaths per year worldwide, and estimated 1.5 million more deaths can be prevented once the coverage of the vaccine improved. In fact, vaccines had successfully eradicated smallpox diseases back in the 1980s. To date, smallpox is the only human disease ever eradicated, and this was made possible by the collaborative global vaccination program. Led by WHO. Number two, the disease is declining due to the improved sanitation and hygiene, rather than vaccination. False. This claim is not supported by the scientific evidence. In fact, look at the graph of measles incidences back in the 1950s. The number of cases were fluctuating over the time until 1963, where a permanent drop in measles cases was observed right after the introduction of measles vaccines. A similar pattern was seen for other vaccine-preventable diseases too. Quoting the original question prompted by CDC, are we expected to believe that better sanitation caused the incidence of each disease to drop? Just at the time a vaccine for that disease was introduced. Number three, vaccine only provide temporary immunity. For those who acquire immunity from the disease itself, become permanently immune. In some cases, this might be partially true. However, the harm of this approach far outweighs the benefits. For instance, to gain the immunity for measles. There will be one in five hundred chance of death from the disease, whereas the chances of getting a severe allergic reaction from vaccination are less than one in a million. Number four, vaccines cause autism. This is false. This misconception started to spread when Andrew Wakefield, a British surgeon, published an article in 1997 that suggested that measles, mumps, rubella vaccine increased the risk of autism in British children. However, 
The paper was completely discredited due to significant procedural error and data manipulation. It was also later discovered that Wakefield had been receiving funds from litigants that were against vaccine manufacturers. Several other studies were conducted after the incident to study the relationship between vaccine and autism extensively. However, none of them found a link between vaccine and autism. It is now proven that vaccines does not cause autism. Number 5. Vaccines contain aluminium and other harmful chemicals. This is false. The vaccines contain formaldehyde, mercury, or aluminium are always the concern of anti-vax community. However, a very small amount of the chemical mentioned is used in FDA-approved vaccines. Such a low amount was proven safe for human health. In fact, we are exposed to low levels of naturally occurring aluminium in nearly all meals daily. Even babies are exposed to greater levels of aluminium daily with their breast milk and infant formula than with vaccine. That's all for today's sharing. Want to know whether giving multiple vaccinations at the same time is safe for children? Or why is it important to vaccinate even when the infection rates are already low? Head over to our website in the show note below and read our health article on anti-vax myth debunk published last Friday. You can also check out all the scientific suggestions used in this podcast in the article. That's it for this week. Please stay safe and stay healthy. If not, you can always talk to us on Doc to us.